I knew it was only a matter of time. Just like the fan base, it's very clear to see now that some of the players can definitely get ahead of themselves as well. Micah Parsons is feeling really good after beating up on the 2-10 New York Giants, which, like I said in my show yesterday after the game, Micah Parsons, I'm speaking directly to you because this whole show is going to be more so of a challenge directly to you, coming from a good place though. But like I said in my show yesterday, Micah, the Giants got as many wins as you have ass cheeks, sir. That team is booty cheeks. This is not the time for you to pump your chest out and want to take a victory lap around all of your detractors after beating the 2-10 New York Giants. Let's get right into it as Attack on Cowboys dives into the nitty gritty. We got to keep it real, bro. And I'm going to keep it a buck with y'all. This right here, this right here is why I'm very, very hesitant to want to go ahead and buy fully in to a Micah Parsons as it pertains to him just being the leader of this team and, and, and as far as how we move and how we roll. Let's get right into it. Micah Parsons quote posted Marcus Mosher responding to a tweet that was mentioning some of his production since returning from his injury. And Marcus Mosher essentially wrote out the fact that Micah has 23 pressures, 11 hurries, eight sacks. I'm gonna get to that in just a second. And all of this is according to PFF. Um, unfortunately, according to the NFL, Micah has five and a half sacks. Now I'm not saying that's any less impressive, but this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. And the fact that Micah Parsons responded to this quote post and he's acknowledging this as if it's fact and he's using this as the moment to pump out his chest and beat his chest after beating up on the two and ten new york giants i have to say that again the two and ten new york giants that don't even really want to win at this point they're tanking they were out there visiting shadur sanders at colorado trying to scout who they were going to draft in the nfl draft that team is out on this season this is what i feared cowboys fans were going to do and that's the fact that they were going to take that victory against the lowly giants and elevate it as if it's something that it's not and even the players themselves are doing that now and we can see that by one of the guys that's supposed to be a leader on this defense you see this is why i had some reluctance in fully buying into a michael parsons as the leader because this is not the time to pump your chest down michael parsons no one thinks that you can't perform against the scrubs bro the criticisms has been about you being able to perform consistently throughout an entire season well you have the upper hand this year because you didn't play half the season already so you should be pretty fresh and that shouldn't be an issue so i'm sure you're going to naturally have a built-in advantage as a chance of being able to take a victory lap about how your production didn't drop off in December this year but again you missed most of October and September so that's probably the reason why but at the same time uh Micah this isn't the time bro people criticized you about your playoff performances which have been lackluster regardless of how you're being game planned against or anything else like that i'm sure people game plan against the kansas city chiefs chris jones as well but guess what that man's number always flashes at the biggest moment when the chiefs need him the most and he's been integral just as integral as a patrick mahomes as winning those championships with the kansas city chiefs if you don't believe me go back and watch those super bowls again and take chris jones off that field take the plays that he himself made off that field and you tell me how those games play out Go ahead and do it. I challenge you. So, Michael Parsons, I give you this challenge. If you want to take this chance to beat your chest and you want to take victory laps on your hater so bad because you're clearly aware of the noise, my friend, I will pimp and slap myself 11 times on video, on camera, on your behalf. And I will, every time I pimp slap myself, I will name one amazing trait about just you, about what you're capable of, about what you can accomplish. I will give you a positive affirmation on every single pimp slap. That is the ultimate, essentially, kissing of the ring right there. I will do that 11 times, as many times as your number says on the back of your jersey. If you can show up just like this, like you did against the New York Giants, after we got a lead, I might add, because again, you did get a half sack. There is a such thing as half sacks. PFF is not a credible source to just cite stuff like this from because of reasons like this. They take their own interpretation of what stats and what things should be looked at as. There is a such thing as a half sack when Donovan Wilson actually is the first one to make contact with Drew Locke and he was on the way to the ground already because Donovan Wilson had already tripped his feet up from under him. So Drew Locke was already getting horizontal. He was already going to the ground. He wasn't going to make it past the line of scrimmage at that point. He was falling and then Micah essentially came over there and laid on him. That was the half sack from this past Thursday. That's the reason half sacks should be a thing because there's no way you should give Michael Parsons credit for that full sack. That was the extent 
of his splash plays before the Cowboys actually built up a, a more than one touchdown lead, before the Giants were put in a position where they had to actually start passing the ball more than they could run it. That was the extent of what we saw from Michael Parsons. Yeah, he got some pressures, but again, I tell you, that pressure stuff is overrated because NFL quarterbacks are supposed to be able to perform under pressure, especially the best ones. So guess what? Those pressure stats, they're going to be rendered null and void against quarterbacks who are actually capable because they're supposed to be able to play under pressure so that counsels each other out it's about what you actually can accomplish on that field man or we can watch the film and see when you're able to free someone else up or anything else like that so we're not just looking at your own individual counting stats as well but this type of stuff right here is why i still have an issue with michael parsons as far as fully buying in on him being the leader the de facto franchise face the leader of this defense bro the leader of this team and being able to impart how he moves and how he handles business and how he goes about what he does on that field, man, as far as just all the friendly, friendly, buddy, buddy, and saying any and everything, and, and, and just the podcasting isn't an issue, bro. Some of your subject matter is what's been the issue. It's not about you being able to podcast. You're missing the point, man. You're missing the point. So, yes, Micah Parsons, you're all world, bro. We all know how amazing you can be. So that's why I'm challenging you to not pump your chest out after doing this against the New York Giants, bro. Pump your chest out after doing this in the playoffs. Pump your chest out after doing this against a game, a ready team, against the Baltimore Ravens, against a team that's supposed to be competing for a Super Bowl. Pump your chest out after doing that against those type of teams. Pump your chest out after doing that against teams who aren't trying to do the best they possibly can to get a number one draft pick, man. That's all I got to say about that, bro. This it's part of what bothers me about the psyche of our defense as far as the direction of the leadership and whose mentality is going to be imparted upon that unit. This is why I want a DeMarvion Overshone's personality, his mentality, his approach to more so be the dominant, I guess, force within that room over the whole of the team. Let Micah Parsons be individually astronomically great because that's what he's capable of being. And that's why he's a value to any team. Let him do that. But we have a leader that's developing. We have a guy that's developing who can really impart the right type of mentality, the right type of approach to the rest of this defense, man. You continue to do an excellent job of rushing that passer, bro, making quarterbacks uncomfortable, moving them out that pocket. You're doing your thing, man. But <sighs> the Giants and the Commanders, bro, and I've been saying all year long the Commanders were fraudulent. And yet you and your teammates were on the podcast lifting up Jaden Daniels as a top five quarterback, bro. That's the type of stuff we have an issue with as Cowboys fans. Because I don't think you understand that the, the primary demographic that wants to hear from you, Micah Parsons, is Cowboys fans. But your subject matter clashes, which your primary demographic actually wants to see and hear from you, bro. And you don't understand that. I think that's the problem is there's a clear lack of awareness that's displayed at times on your behalf. And I'm not here to try to get invited to Thanksgiving. I'm not here to, 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 to try to get a pat on the back or, or, or a pat on the head or, or to get acknowledged by any of y'all. I'm not here to get quote posted, quote tweeted or nothing else, bro. So I'm not gonna sit here and just act like that this type of stuff is, is oh, this is the right type, this is what you wanna see. Not after beating the Giants. Not after beating the Giants. Say what you say, we ain't done yet. We still gonna keep fighting, bro. And you get back to work, man. But all this bravado and pumping your chest out, all I gotta say is, bro, you better be in Joe Burrow face every single play against the Cincinnati Bengals, man. Because if y'all come back and lay an egg, this is going to be one of the type of things that's looked at, bro. You you took this moment to pump your chest out after beating the New York Giants. I mean, you can just go down and look at his quote post. And you can just see all the people that were just willing and ready to just automatically agree with him. All the people that flip how they feel after a, a, one game, after, after one happening, instead of actually challenging these guys to be the best version of themselves week in and week out. Michael, be mad at the people that's doubting you all year long, bro. Be mad at them through the playoffs. Be mad at them through the most important and crucial moments in these games and in these seasons, bro. Be mad at them all the way through. Don't be mad for a couple days and you start getting praise and getting all this credit. And then it's like, y'all lose that edge. And we see it happen all the time, so we can't say it doesn't happen. We see it happen. Now, you putting this out there publicly just lets us know that it actually is a thing. You guys start feeling yourselves. You start pumping your chest out. You feel like this is the time to start circling the wagons. And it's like, bro, this is what people call front running, man. This is what people call front running. I want to root for you guys. And I want to do that. I am going to root for you guys. But I got to be honest, man. I'm just not the type of person that's going to blindly follow people. 
I got to be honest with y'all about the things that we're doing as a fan base and as some of the players on this team and Jerry and everything else, every aspect of this team to contribute to how some of the people craft these narratives about you guys that we try so hard to fight against. That's why it means that much to me. That's why it's something that I'm hammering at because y'all got to remember, I come up here and put my face on it. I put it on record, bro. I come up here and I cut for these people and I put my credibility on the line and I put whether I know what I'm talking about on the line every day in front of thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people on a daily basis, man. So I can't come up here and continue to act like people are being wrong, people are being unfair in how they're treating the team, how they're covering the team, but guys are actually doing things that contribute to some of the narratives that get created. This is the type of stuff that contributes to front runner narratives. This is the type of stuff that contributes to the Cowboys feeling themselves too much. It's hard to even fight against those negative connotations with you guys when y'all actually do things that, that, that confirm it. And that's just, that's just where I'm coming from with it. Again, I will pimp slap myself 11 times up here and give positive affirmations for Michael Parsons every time I do it. If he can do this against the best teams in the biggest moments, because at the end of the day, that's all I want is for our guys to show up when it matters the most. And if it takes me having to embarrass myself publicly to get that done, then damn it, I'll be the guy to do that. Because again, clearly you draw a lot of motivation from what people think about the things that you do. So I'm letting you know very, very clearly and succinctly what I think about the things that you do. I think this is front runnerism. I don't think this is a good look. I don't think this is the type of thing you want your leader to be doing. I think you want your leader to have some awareness. I think you want your leader to have some humility. I think you want your leader to actually learn from situations, learn from why people are calling you front runners, learn from why people say that you feel yourselves after a couple of wins and then you have a letdown because you go into the games feeling yourself. Learn from why people are actually doubting you instead of creating your own narratives and trying to justify everything in your own minds to, to make it to where you're the victim. You're always right. Sometimes we as people have to take accountability for the things that we contribute to the ether, man. This is the type of stuff you want people to articulate to you so you can get better if you're willing to take that lesson. And that's just, it is what it is. And we still them same old cowboys, bro. And we still front running right now. We are calling me, texting me, paging me, asking me, am I still the ball? Y'all use the check on me. Listen, 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 listen. I'm still the boys. Hey, hey! Woo, push on my boy, shot.